Day number three of the 12 days of MLB rankings coming at you hot, coming at you quick, and coming at you with the best second baseman from every team in Major League Baseball going into the 2021 season. You guys know the drill. You've been here for the first two days, but in case you haven't, we're going over every player from every team at each position and ranking them one through 30-ish. Some teams have a couple more players than one. Going off of 2020 stats, but also using 18, 19, 17, looking at the player as a whole and giving you my thoughts and opinions and eventually my ranking on them. I did this last year. We're doing it again this year, 12 days in a row of ranking players. We end it with the top 50 players overall in Major League Baseball. So if you guys do enjoy this big overhaul, the 12 days of MLB rankings, drop a like on the video, help out the channel. Subscribe to the channel because if you're not, you're going to miss out on the rankings. Get in the comments down below. Of course, these are my opinions, but I want to know yours as well. Tell me where you agree or disagree with me and make sure you guys are following me on Twitter and Instagram at GiraffeNeckMark. The links are always in the description to all my social media. Time to rank some second baseman. Getting our list started today at the number 32 spot. I got Nicky Lopez of the Kansas City. Royals. Whit Merrifield should be at second base, but they've been rocking Nicky Lopez out there the last couple seasons, and he just hasn't been good. Not that great of a defender, and at the plate, he just doesn't offer a lot. In 159 games in his career, he has three homers, 30 doubles, a 228 average, 279 on base, 307 slugging, and a 586 OPS. Nicky Lopez would be a good depth piece, but as your everyday second baseman, the Royals are coming in with the lowest ranked second baseman in baseball in my eyes. For the number 31 spot, we're going to head out to the West Texas Rangers, Rugned Odor. Odor was at the bottom of my list last year, and he's at the the bottom of my list again in 2020. He's only 26 years old going into his 27 year old season, which is mind blowing to me because it feels like he's been playing forever. And boy, have the good days just gone from Rugnet Odor. 2019, he did hit 30 home runs, but a 721 OPS, even with that amount of power, there's not much there. He's not particularly good in the field. In 2020, he showed he had another awful season. And in fact, he might be losing his second base spot to possibly Nick Solak or another player this year. He finished with a 623 OPS in 2020, a 209 on base, 413 slugging. He's going to hit home runs, but that's literally about it. And that just can't get me to rank you very high on my list. Odor's at number 31. Coming in at the number 30 spot, we got the Oakland A's projected second baseman, Tony Kemp. Now, will Tony Kemp end up being their second baseman? Probably not. He's a depth player who can play the outfield as well. Last year in 49 games, 93 at-bats, he had five doubles, four RBIs, and a 664 OPS. That's not the kind of player he is. He is a depth piece. He's a utility guy. He's in there for some pinch running scenarios. He is not meant to be an everyday player because his numbers just don't live up to it. So I'm including him so that the A's get a guaranteed second baseman in this video. But overall, I don't expect him play there next year. And if he does, the A's are in a bit of trouble. He's a 30th ranked second baseman in my eyes. I'm going to go down to Florida and talk about John Birdie of the Miami Marlins. Could also be Jazz Chisholm, but right now he is the projected starter at second base. And Birdie, while he's a great utility player, is not a great everyday guy. But I will say in 2020, he had a pretty decent season. Two homers, five doubles, 14 RBIs, and sold nine bases. Hitting 258 with a 388 on base, 350 slugging, 738 OPS. In a very, very short amount of time, he can be pretty good. But if you play him over a full season, I don't think you're going to a lot out of John Birdie, and he's just not that great at second base. So maybe it's a little harsh to put John Birdie down here, but again, he should be a depth piece, not your everyday second baseman. Kind of what we're doing with this bottom of this list here. So John Birdie, number 29. For the 28th best second baseman in Major League Baseball, I'm going to go to the Chicago Cubs and Nico Horner. Now, Nico Horner's super young, only 23 years old, and I think he's going to be a better player and rise through these rankings as the years go on. But right now, based on what we've seen from Nico Horner, I got to put him at number 28. He's hit for almost no power. His average has been okay. OPS low on base percent low, but he is a good glove. He definitely has a solid glove at second base, but that's just not enough to get him higher up on my list just yet. In 68 games in his career, he's hit three homers, five doubles, and 30 RBIs, 247 average, 309 on base, 333 slugging, and 643 OPS. Need to see a little bit more of him. It's a very small sample size, but based on what we have seen, I can't put him much higher than 28. At the number 27 spot, I'm going to go with the Colorado Rockies second baseman, Ryan McMahon. McMahon's just not that great. I think that Ryan McMahon can be a very good second baseman, and he's still young, so there's time to improve, but based on what we've seen right now and the fact that he plays in Colorado, his numbers are just kind of underwhelming. In the field, he's fine. At the plate, he's just fine. In the last two seasons combined, he's hit 33 homers, 28 doubles, and 109 RBIs in almost 200 games, 652 plate appearances, 241 average, 320 on base, 442 slugging, 762 OPS, but the OPS plus is low at 85, of course, adjusting for Coors. I need to see better offensive numbers out of Ryan McMahon to get higher on this list, and defensively, he's not that great either, so 27 for me. At the number 26 spot, gonna go back out east to the Boston Red Sox and talk about Michael Chavis. I think the Red Sox will probably grab a free agent to play second 
second base this year, but right now, Chavis seems like he could be that guy. In 137 games with the Red Sox, 23 homers, 15 doubles, 77 RBIs, 241 average, 304 on base, 424 slugging, and a 728 OPS. For a guy who's supposed to be an offensive type player, his offensive numbers are underwhelming. And the fact that he's not great defensively is another knock on his game, but I do like the power in his bat, so I will put Chavis here at number 26, but not one of the top second basemen in the league by any means. Sticking in the American League East with quotation marks, Baltimore Orioles' former second baseman, Hanser Alberto, comes in at number 25. Hanser Alberto is a funny player. In the field, he's all right. At the plate, he's all right. But he does hit for a high average. He puts the ball in play. He just doesn't really get on base, and he doesn't hit for any power. In the last two seasons, he's got about 750 at-bats, 15 homers, 36 doubles, 73 RBIs, a 299 average, which is nice, but a 322 on base and a 413 slugging still puts him at a 735 OPS, OPS plus 96. Alberto would be a nice player to have in a pinch hit situation, or if you have a great lineup around him and he can hit ninth, but if you're trying to put him at the top of the order, that's where you can get into a little bit of trouble, and he just isn't one of the best second basemen in baseball. Still a very solid player, though. I got him at number 25. Next up on the list, at number 24, Pittsburgh Pirates second baseman Adam Frazier. Frazier's got a solid little glove and an okay little bat. We've seen him have some decent years in the past. You saw in 2018, put up an OPS of almost 800. 2019, again, 750 OPS, good glove. But 2020 took a little bit of a step back, and I think Adam Frazier is just kind of the definition of average. He's like a 270 hitter. It's about 10 homers and 25 doubles a season, 750 OPS. That's about bang on average for me. And with the talent that has emerged at second base recently, I have to knock him down my list from where he was last year. And I've got him placed at number 24. The 23rd best second baseman in Major League Baseball, Washington Nationals, Starling Castro. Kind of forgot this guy existed, but that's kind of Starling Castro's existence the last few years. Very quietly has been somewhat productive, a little bit of a better version of Hanser Alberto in my eyes. It's first somewhat high average around 270, doesn't get on base at all, doesn't hit for a ton of power, but he hits for more than Hanser Alberto and is okay in the field. He only played in 16 games in 2020, so I'm not really going to count that. I'm looking more so what he did in 2019 with the Marlins, 22 homers, 31 doubles, 736 OPS, and we did see him play well with the Yankees in 2017. Castro is by no means a second baseman you should be building your team around, but at only 31 years old, he's not that old. He can be a very productive player for the Nationals. Coming in at the number 22 spot, I got St. Louis Cardinals projected second baseman Tommy Edmond. Now, they got rid of Colton Wong to play Tommy Edmond. A little bit younger, going to be a little bit cheaper. Is he a better player, though? That's yet to be seen. He's coming at my number 22 spot, though. Really good rookie season in 2019, but that looks like it might be the best Tommy Edmond that we see, as we saw him come back down a little bit more to earth in 2020. But you look at his numbers averaged out over those two seasons, I think that's more of the player you get in Tommy Edmond. 147 games, 16 homers, 24 doubles, 62 RBIs, and 17 stolen bases, 283 average, 337 on base, 449 slugging, and 786 OPS. Very good player. Probably a little worse than those numbers, because the 2019 is really outweighing the 2020. And at second base, not the best defender, but he is still a good player. And coming in at number 22 is more of a credit to how deep second base has gotten and how many good players now play that position as opposed to Tommy Edmond being in the bottom half of the rankings. Just missing out on the top 20, coming in at number 21, I've got Donovan Solano of the San Francisco Giants. Donovan Solano has been really good the last two years. There's no way around it. The reason I have him at number 21 is just because I don't necessarily know how real this is. We've seen almost 350 games of being mediocre but we've seen these last 135 with the Giants where he's real solid. With the Giants the last two years, 135 games, seven homers, 28 doubles, two triples, and 52 RBIs, hitting 328 with a 362 on base, 459 slugging, and 821 OPS, 121 OPS plus, and he's got a nice little glove. He was a really big reason for why the Giants were successful in 2020. He's going to be out there every day, probably in 2021 as well. Solid little player Donovan Solano, and you see a little more out of him, a little more production, and he can crack that top 20 easy, coming in at number 21. Now, getting our top 20 started at the number 20 spot, Gavin Lux. And maybe I'm overhyping the projection a little bit here, and I'm not paying attention to what we've seen thus far, but in 42 games, I don't feel like we've seen the real Gavin Lux because he hasn't been great with that 655 OPS. But boy, is he a great player, and I think he's going to be great in the Dodgers next year, getting a chance every day to play second base, and that's why I have him inside my top 20. I'm not going to overrate him too much, but I think to not call him a top 20 second baseman would be crazy. He is a good player. He's super young, super talented. I think you give him a real shot. He's never really got that with the Dodgers, and he will be just fine. He's too good not to be. At the number 19 spot, Seattle Mariners second baseman Dylan Moore. Really pleasantly surprised with the improvements that Dylan Moore made in 2020 in his 38 games with the Mariners. He's got himself a nice little game to him. In 2020, he had the best season of his career, 38 games, 8 homers, 9 doubles, 17 RBIs. We saw the power numbers go way up for him in Seattle. A 255 average, 358 on base, 496 slugging to 855 OPS. Those are great numbers. And over his two seasons in Seattle, 151, so basically a full season, 17 home runs, 
runs, 23 doubles, 23 stolen bases with a 750 OPS. He's also got a pretty nice glove at second base. I like Dylan Moore. He hits the ball hard. He's a little bit older. He's going into his 28 year old season, but for the Mariners, I think he can make a difference. I got him inside the top 20 at number 19. For the 18th best second baseman in Major League Baseball, former Cleveland Indian Cesar Hernandez. Cesar Hernandez has always been right about average, and he's still at that right about average spot. Three homers, 20 doubles, which did lead all the American League, 283 average, 355 on base, 408 slugging, and a 763 OPS. One of the best seasons of his career, albeit short, but it was good, and he played a good second base, won a gold glove for Cleveland. I just can't put him much higher because this is what you get out of Cesar Hernandez. You're not going to get much better. You're not going to get much worse. He is going to be an average second baseman, and number 18 is pretty much about average. Got a nice little bat, good on some teams, but that's what you're getting with him. Just a pretty average player. Number 18 for Cesar. At number 17, you got Gene Segura of the Philadelphia Phillies. Another very average second baseman. Now, he might end up playing shortstop this year, but I think the Phillies are going to make a move, so I put him at second base because that's really more the position he's more useful at. He'll get a better ranking here. Last year, solid year in 54 games, seven homers, five doubles, two triples, 25 RBIs, 769 OPS. But with Gene Segura, again, that's kind of like the best you're going to get. He hasn't had an OPS over 800 since 2016, and in his entire career, that was the only season he had an OPS above 800, and he was playing in Arizona. He's been good with the Phillies. He's been solid, but because he has an average glove and an average bat, he goes right in the average spot along with Cesar Hernandez at number 17. Number 16 in today's video, Chicago White Sox, Nick Madrigal. Nick Madrigal is a really good player. Played in 29 games in 2020, finally got the call up. We know about how great he was in the minors. The dude never strikes out and he continued to never strike out in the majors. Only struck out seven times in 100 at bats. Zero homers, three doubles. That's what kind of makes me go, eh. 11 RBIs, a 340 average. He's always going to be a close to 300 average kind of guy. 376 on base, 369 slugging, gives him an OPS at 745. He's going to put the ball in play. He's going to get hits and he's not going to hit for much power, but he plays a better second base, which is why I bumped him up in my rankings and I put him at number 16. Madrigal's a really good young player, so I'm going to keep an eye out over the next couple seasons. For this 15th best second baseman in today's video, I got Luis Arise from the Minnesota Twins. Not going to lie, I thought it was Arise. Apparently Arise. That's what baseball reference is telling me. I'll listen. Luis is a good little player. He's like a better version of what we've seen on Nick Madrigal. Doesn't strike out, puts the ball in play, walks, plays a pretty good second base. He's a strong player. Just has no power. In 124 games in two seasons, we've seen him hit four homers, 29 doubles, 41 RBIs, with a 331 average, 390 on base, 429 slugging, and an 819 OPS. Pretty decent glove. He's not the best, but he's not the worst. And he walks more than he strikes out. That gets him slightly above average for me, coming at number 15. Coming at the number 14 spot, not signed to a team, Colton Wong. Now, yes, people are going to freak out about this Colton Wong thing, but I know how good he is in the field. He's gross at second base. He won his second straight gold glove, but at the plate, he is so inconsistent and just hasn't been great. He will walk, but he has no power. But in the grand scheme of just players, and you're taking him off a team and looking at them under a microscope, I can't put Colton Wong higher than 15. He doesn't hit particularly well, and he has a gross glove, which a lot of second basemen start to have a good glove now. A lot of them are hitting too. Last year in 2020, awful offensive year. One homer, four doubles, two triples, 16 RBIs, a 675 OPS. The year before was good, but then the year before that, not great. The year before that, good. The three years before that, not great. He's going to give you the good glove. You hope for an average bat. He is going to help you win games though. 1.3 war player, according to baseball reference last year. At the number 13 spot, going to the Detroit Tigers, Willie Castro. Casually finished fourth in the rookie of the year voting last year. Had a little bit of a coming out party in 36 games. In 2020, six homers, four doubles, two triples, 24 RBIs, a 349 batting average, 381 on base, 550 slugging, 932 OPS. Those numbers are eye popping, but you have to even them out with the year before in 30 games where he wasn't good. Overall, you get a guy who's hitting 297 with a 339 on base, 459 slugging, and a 797 OPS, 112 OPS plus in two season 66 games, short time span. This is about as high as I could physically put him without seeing a full year of play, but his bat's going to play. Good enough glove. I like what I'm seeing out of Willie Castro. He really opened up a lot of eyes last year and I got him coming in at 13, maybe a chance to crack the top 10 at the end of 2021. Coming in at number 12, not currently signed to a team, but played for the Angels and A's last year, Tommy Listella. Tommy Listella has been a pretty good player the last few years. He can play second and a little bit of third base. Nice little glove, but you obviously are now getting him for his bat, which has woke up the last two seasons. In 2019 and 20 combined, 135 games, he's at 21 homers, 22 doubles, 69 RBIs, nice, 289 average, 356 on base, 471 slugging, 827 OPS, walking more than he struck out, all the things you like to see out of Tommy Listella. Nice left-handed bat for sure. Can't put him inside the top 10 yet because he hasn't played enough games at a high level for me to get him there, but he's looking pretty good and he's going to make an impact for a team. He's a great pickup. Tommy Listella, number 12. New Jersey kid as well. Shout out to New Jersey. And then just missing on the top 10 at number 11, a favorite of mine, Mike Moustakis. Now he's a favorite of mine because he's Greek. I always represent the Greeks, but at second 
second base, I gotta keep him out. The top 10, 11 is still really good because he is a solid player. Moustakis is the second baseman that hits for power and hits for more power. In 2019 with Milwaukee, we saw 35 homers and 30 doubles out of him, 845 OPS, phenomenal year at the plate. And then 2020, he still hit for the power. Eight homers, nine doubles in 44 games, 799 OPS, which is still above average for a second baseman, but the average did go down a little bit to 230. And of course, defensively, that's where he lacks. He just doesn't have as good of a glove as some of the guys in the top 10. And with a top 10 loaded like the second baseman have, you gotta be able to do it all. Moustakis is weak on the glove side though, but boy, do I love his bat. And I expect it to be even better in Cincinnati next year. So Mike Moustakis at number 11. Getting my top 10 started, a fan favorite at the number 10 spot, David Fletcher. Fletcher's a beast and we all know about the meme, but it lives on. He's a good player. 2020, he played in 49 games, three homers, 13 doubles, 18 RBIs, a 319 average, 376 on base, 425 slugging, 801 OPS. He has improved every year he is coming to the league. He's phenomenal in the field, can play multiple positions at a high level, quick on the base, paths. He is a ball player. He's good enough to even play shortstop. That's how good he is defensively. And at the plate, he is showing improvements. More pop, better eye, hitting for a higher average. I'm loving everything I'm seeing out of David Fletcher. You know he's getting inside this top 10 at the number 10 spot. Coming in one spot ahead of Fletcher, we're going to number nine, Jake Cronenworth of the Padres. Cronenworth had a awesome 2020 season where he finished second in the rookie of the year voting as a bit of a surprise to a lot of people. Kind of came out of nowhere, but he was a part of those Padres and Rays trades that they made in the past year. Cronenworth was great traditionally, and he lit up StatCast numbers. I mean, he hit the ball hard, ran fast. He does all those numbers great, and he does the traditional great as well. Four homers, 15 doubles, three triples, and 20 RBIs in 54 games. 285 average, 354 on base, 477 slugging, 831 OPS. He hits, he fields, he runs, he throws. Jake Cronenworth is a great little pickup for the Padres last year, and he is a top 10 second baseman in the game, coming at number nine. At the number eight spot, I'm heading back to the National League Central to talk about Keston Hira of the Milwaukee Brewers. Keston Hira hits home runs. He does that very well. He does not play second base very well though, but his offense is so good that it doesn't matter because in 143 games with the Brewers, he's hit 32 homers, 27 doubles, and 81 RBIs along with stealing 12 bases. That gives him a 266 average, 338 on base, 505 slugging, and 843 OPS, and that was after a bit of a weak 2020. His numbers are good. He rakes. He smacks the baseball. He's gonna get better in the field, but in order to get in that elite elite category, I gotta see the glove improve a little bit. That being said though, his bat is so good. I don't care how many times he strikes out. I would like him to play second base, most likely on my team, because he's a good ball player. Keston here at only 24 years old is getting better, and he comes at number eight. At the number seven spot, I got Toronto Blue Jays second baseman, Kevin Biggio. Biggio is good, really good. Gets on base super well. Great top of the order guy, plays a good second base. He's a good ball player. We saw him come up in 2019, and have a really strong season, 793 OPS, finished fifth in the rookie of the year voting, and 2020, he continued on it. Eight home runs, 16 doubles, 28 RBIs, and six stolen bases, 250 average, 375 on base, 432 slugging, and 807 OPS. Put the two years together, he's played about 159 games, 25 homers, 30 plus doubles, 20 and 0 on stolen bases, and an 800 OPS. Kevin Biggio, so good. Really, really good. He's the most slept on of the three just because you got Guerrero and Bichette who are named. Biggio seems to get underappreciated, but he is so good. And he's inside the top 10 for sure at number seven. Just missing on the top five, coming in at number six, I got Brandon Lau of the Tampa Bay Rays. And it was close, but I had to put him at number six. He has been improving every single year and he was phenomenal in 2020 because he's a good ball player. Finished eighth in the MVP vote. 14 homers, nine doubles, two triples, and 37 RBIs in 2020. 269 average, 362 on base, 554 slugging, 916 OPS. Combine the 56 in 2020 with the 82 in 2019. He's given you about 31 homers a year with 26 doubles, 88 RBIs, and 876 OPS while playing a pretty decent second base. And he comes at number six. That's not a knock to him. He is really good. The top five though is loaded. At number five, despite having a bit of an off year, I'm going to go with Cattell Marte of the Arizona Diamondbacks because what he did in 2019 is repeatable. He still hits the ball hard. He's not striking out a lot. He puts the ball in play. He just got unlucky in 2020. 19, we know what he did. Fourth in MVP voting, 32 homers, 36 doubles, nine triples, 981 OPS. Disgusting. 2020 though was different. Two homers, 14 doubles, 17 RBIs, 287 average, 323 on base, 409 slugging, and 732 OPS. I'm chalking it up to a weird year. If Cattell Marte continues to struggle, he will fall in the rankings. But Cattell Marte can easily be a 25 home run guy a year with close to 40 doubles, plays good defense. He's a great athlete. Cattell Marte's got to be inside my top five. That's why I got him here at number five. Coming in at the number four spot, second baseman for my New York Mets, Jeff McNeil, friend of the channel as well. He's an absolute beast. Came up in 2018, was great. 329 average, 852 OPS, sixth in rookie of the year voting in 63 games. 2019 had an insane year. 23 homers, 38 doubles, 916 OPS, all-star. 2020 quietly had another really good year. Four homers, 14 doubles, 23 RBIs, 311 average, 380 
83 on base, 454 slugging, and an 836 OPS. The power numbers weren't necessarily there in the home run department, but he's still hitting for a good average, still getting on base, still hitting doubles, and he rarely strikes out. McNeil is an absolute stud, and he can play a multitude of positions pretty highly. Big fan of Jeff McNeil, big fan of the Mets, but that's not why he's at number four. He's at number four because he's a damn good player. The squirrel comes in at number four. For the third best second baseman in Major League Baseball, I got Ozzie Albies of the Atlanta Braves. Albies 2020 was weird. He had injuries, so it kind of kept him out of a lot of games, only played in 29. But if you look at the three seasons combined, 18, 19, and 20, you get some good numbers out of him. 278 average, 327 on base, 475 slugging, 802 OPS. He's a great hitter, and that's with a guy who can really only hit for one side. With the glove, he's fantastic. He steals bases, 32 stolen bases. He's an all-around great player. I'm not happy the Braves have him, of course, as a Mets fan, but he's a fun player to watch. He's so talented, and he's only 24 years old. He's only going to be getting better. Got him at number three right now. Just missing out on the number one spot at number two, Houston Astros second baseman, Jose Altuve. I had Altuve at number one last year. He's been dethroned, and we'll talk about that guy in a second, but he's still a top player in the league. Yes, in 2020, he had a 629 OPS, but we've seen 48 game stretches out of Altuve where he will be ice cold. He did it in 2019. Did the whole cheating thing and all the allegations maybe get to his head a little bit? Yes, but we saw a glimpse of the old Jose Altuve in the playoffs, and I think that's more of the player he was. I mean, in 2019, he had a 903 OPS with 31 homers. That's a crazy good year for a guy like Jose Altuve. Is he probably going to drop down these rankings as the years go on? Yes, but going into 2021, I don't expect him to take another big step back like he did in 2020. He's still going to perform at an all-star level. He's too talented not to. The little engine that could have mad at him, he cheated, but he is still a good ball player. I at least think that down to my core, he's going to be fine in 2021. I got him at number two right now. And then coming in at number one, the new best second baseman in Major League Baseball in my eyes, DJ LeMahieu of whatever team he signs for, probably the New York Yankees. I just don't know yet at the time of recording. Yeah, DJ was number two last year, but he quickly jumped to number one this year. He had a phenomenal year in 2020, continuing on a fantastic season in 2019. Since joining the Yankees, he's been a different player. In those two seasons, he's played in 195 games, 36 homers, 43 doubles, 129 RBIs, 336 average, 386 on base, 536 slugging, 922 OPS, OPS plus at 145. And he's got a fantastic glove. Fourth in MVP voting 2019, third in 2020. You can't ignore those numbers anymore. He is the best second baseman in baseball. He's going to get paid this offseason. It's just a matter as to who pays him. Should be the Yankees, but if not, he's going to have a lot of teams after him. He's the best second baseman in baseball, and he's going to end up our video here at the number one spot. Without a doubt, he's so good. 25 homers a year, 30 doubles, and an OPS at 900. Beast. So those are my rankings for every second baseman from every team in Major League Baseball. I'd love to know your guys' opinion down in the comment section below. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Do you like my picks? Let me hear what you got to say. Drop a like on the video if you did enjoy it, and you're pumped for the 12 days of rankings, as well as subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out. Drop me a follow on Twitter and Instagram, Draftneck Mark, links in the description. Second base, not the most hype position, but hey, we got it out. We're continuing on, and tomorrow we're going to have, I think, shortstop or third base, one of those two. And those two positions, both of them, are going to be big. So make sure you guys are here for that. Thank you so much for supporting me on everything I do, as well as the 12 days of rankings. That's where we're going to wrap it up today. You guys know the drill from here on out. YouTube recommends you watch this video. This is my most recent upload, so click through those if you have not yet seen them. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow for another day of rankings.